Hello, dear viewers. Welcome to our segment, Learn at Home, brought to you by Mbiehuzia Bernard, your science teacher, Kampala Parents School, and NTV Uganda. Uh, I think you are doing very well. Our good children, Muslim, Muslim children, I, I can only say, Ramadan Karim. Uh, yesterday, I received a surprising message from one of the children, and that is none other than Ahumuza Agatha, head girl, Kampala Parents School. She has a wonderful message for each and every child in this country. Listen to her carefully. Thanks to you all. First of all, I would like to thank the Lord for sustaining us to this COVID-19 pandemic period. I am really very grateful. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the management of Kampala Parent School for working tirelessly in order to keep us focused. May God bless you. I would also like to thank the teachers for teaching us through e-learning. I appreciate your hard work and resilience. My fellow pupils, I'd like to encourage you to keep working hard in order to strive for excellence. And as for my fellow candidates, I request you to keep reading your books in order to excel in PLE and keep the standard of Kampala Print School sky high. Lastly, I would like to advise you to, that, to adhere to the Ministry of Health guidelines such as wash your hands with clean water and soap or with an alcohol-based sanitizer. Avoid touching the soft parts of the body such as the eyes, nose and mouth. Keep a safe distance for at least two meters from a person who is sneezing or coughing. Stay home, stay safe, stay blessed. Thank you very much. My name is Ahomuza Maria Agatha of Kampala Parent School, the head girl of 2019 to 2020. Thank you so much, our dear head girl. We are proud of you. And each and every person who has heard the words, really, you need to borrow a leaf. Now, last time, I left you with work. I'm very glad the majority of you sent in your answers on our WhatsApp number, which is ever on, 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 our, on our screen. In addition, NTV Kampala Parents has done it for, for you. We, you. You used to complain that you missed some lessons, but this time a link has been provided. Check on the screen. It is there. In case you missed any lesson in any subject, just go to YouTube and download whatever you missed. Uh, I left you with three numbers last time. And when I received the answers, I realized that each and every person passed highly. I received work from Ashwin Jane Kampala Parent School. You passed very well. Daniel Takiwereza Kampala Parent School, P7G. Ayesiga Raymond. Parental Care Primary School, Bushenyi. Naba Wanuka Abigail, Kampala Parent School, P6. I like that. P6 children are also participating. Then we have uh, Nyongarizi Clara, Hillside Primary School, Naria. We have Angiro Robert, Joy Kim, Christian Primary School. And Basa Brook from Teratabis Primary School. After receiving the work, I didn't find any problems. But there are some few children who sent in some questions, and I'm here to answer the few questions which you sent. The rest get a pen and also put down these questions. Uh, one of the questions is, listen carefully, why are tweezers grouped under third class levers? So for me, whenever any person asks about classes of levers, I simplified everything using what we are going to write at the end of this year. P-L-E. Don't suffer. Whereby P stands for pivot. Good. What about L? Everybody. Lord. And then E? Effort. Good. So we said when the pivot is in between the load and the effort, then the class of levers is first class levers. Then when the load is in between, the force you are trying to overcome, then that one becomes the second class levers. 
Then when the effort, the other force we apply on a machine to overcome the load, whenever this effort is between the pivot and the load, then that class of lever is third class levers. Now, even if you are given a machine you have never seen, and it comes in an exam and they ask you, why is a water pump called a first class lever machine? Since you see it first, it means the pivot is in between. Just say the pivot is between the load and the effort. Why is a wheelbarrow called a second class lever machine? You say the load is between the pivot and the effort. Now this question is, why are tweezers grouped under third class levers? Don't suffer. Move up and say the effort is between the pivot and the load. So the answer is the effort is between the pivot and the load. That is a question from Ayesiga. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Then another question is, calculate the mechanical advantage carried, uh, uh, that is used to carry the load of 600 newtons. Load of 600 newtons using effort of 300 newtons. So the effort is 300 newtons. I told you that the word or the term mechanical advantage means the number of times a machine simplifies work. In, uh, in other words, we say it is the ratio of the load to the effort. So just look at the two and we say mechanical advantage which can be abbreviated as MA is given by the formula load divided by effort. We have the two. So our load is 600 newtons. Our effort is 300 newtons. So the quotient, the result we get after dividing these two numbers is the mechanical advantage. Remember, we have newtons, newtons, so we cross these two, meaning we are not going to have any units. Then we also cross zero with zero, zero with zero, so we remain with six divided by three, by three, one, by three, two. Therefore, our mechanical advantage is two without units. Mechanical advantage does not have units just because it is a ratio of two forces, of two numbers with the same units. So at the end of the day, we shall not get units for mechanical advantage. Good. Number three, the, uh, sorry, sorry, that question was from Juliana from Entebbe Quality Primary School. Then she asked another question. What is refraction of light? What is refraction of light? What is refraction? Refraction of light. Now, uh, I know some schools have already uh, tackled this topic, others have not. But we have two main words we use in light. We have the word reflection, don't confuse the two. We have reflection of light and refraction of light. Reflection is the bouncing back of light rays as they meet a shiny surface. When a light ray comes and hits a shiny surface, then it bounces. We say light has been reflected. So reflection is the bouncing back of light rays as they meet a shiny surface, like a plain mirror. Light from you goes to the mirror and then it bounces back and you are able to see yourself in a mirror. But refraction, whenever you hear the word refraction, the first word to come into your mind is the word bending. Sometimes light bends. So the bending of light rays is called refraction of light. So in simple terms, just say refraction of light is the bending of light rays. If you want to add some other ingredients, you say refraction of light is the bending of light rays as they move from one transparent medium to another transparent medium with different optical densities. Yes, for example, if you have a glass, a glass is a transparent object. 
In P3, you learned about those objects, opaque objects, the objects which don't allow any light to pass through, like this ruler, light cannot pass through. The wall, light can't pass through. Your body, light can't pass through. That is an opaque object. But we have those objects which allow light to pass through easily without any problem, and those ones, we call them transparent objects. For example, glass, air, clean water, those are examples of transparent objects. So when a light ray travels from air, which is transparent, to glass, which is also transparent, light will not continue the way it has been moving. If this one is the normal, then we shall find out that the light ray will bend towards the normal. So this bending, you can see light is moving from air to glass. What is causing the bending is that the density of air is different from the density of a glass. And when we compare the densities, air is less dense than glass. So air, uh, the ray has to bend because its speed will reduce. So the reduction in the speed causes the bending. Are we together? Yes, I know you learned about these rays. This is the incident ray. This one is the refracted ray. This is the normal ray. And when the ray gets out of the glass, it, it regains its speed, and now it will move like this, and this one is called emergent ray. So you have known. So we say refraction of light is the bending of light rays as they move from one transparent medium to another transparent medium, but of different optical densities. So that's how I can briefly describe that term. Then... Another question is related to question one. Why is a fishing rod classified as a third class lever? Same approach. The effort is between the pivot and the load. Uh -huh. Then, and that question was coming from Chirabo Heili, Homesdarin School, Gayaza. Another question from that child. What term refers to the turning force of a machine? The turning force of a machine. Uh -huh. Who can tell us the name given the turning force of a machine? Yes, Moses. Uh, uh, not the pivot. I have not talk, talked of the turning point. I have not talked about this turning point. This time we are talking about the turning force. The turning force is called correct a moment. The answer is a moment. A moment is a turning force. A moment is a turning force. So the answer is a moment. Then we have another question here. Someone is asking, mention any one disease of the liver. One disease of the liver. The liver is the main organ in the body. It does a lot during digestion. It helps in detoxication. But now we want some of the diseases. One of the diseases is hepatitis B. Most of you were, were immunized against that disease, hepatitis B. We also have hepatitis E. Hepatitis E is a waterborne disease. Hepatitis B is, is, it is viral, even hepatitis E is viral. But for hepatitis B, mainly it is spread through sexual intercourse and also getting into contact with some body fluids. But hepatitis E is waterborne. Then we have another disease of the liver caused by overconsumption of alcohol. You learned that one in your primary six, and we call that one liver cirrhosis. Liver cirrhosis. Look at the spelling of cirrhosis. Liver cirrhosis. Yes. Then this child also wanted to know one disease of the kidneys. The kidneys are the main organs of the body which help us infiltration of blood now one of the diseases who can tell me i know you some of you have already learned about this excretion yes munanura good kidney stones that is one of them another one kidney failure yes kidney failure can be both a disease or it or a disorder so that is what i can give for now we shall have more then we have another child called Kenya and Claire from Chankukwe, eh, Chankukwe, that is my school, from Chankukwe Primary School. Why didn't we use load, load force times load arm in moment two like you did in moment one? Now I think I can bring in this one to explain that. 
Kenya and thank you for your question. So these are some of the numbers I left you with last time. Now we said on a machine, on a lever, we have two forces. One force is the load force. Another one is the effort force. So if you have the load force here and load arm here, again you will not say load arm and load force. This side now there must be another force which is overcoming the load and that force will be the effort. So you cannot say load force times load arm equals load force times load arm. This is now effort force, effort arm. Load force, load arm. So that's why we cannot use load on, on the two on the either side. No. We have to use load, load arm. Effort, effort arm. I think you have understood that, my friend Kenyanji. Then there is another child from Juliana called Victor Collins. The question is, what is TID in full? TID. Now, whenever you ask such a question, that I, I didn't want to answer this question because it is vague. It is ambiguous. You have to specify and say, as used in. So, as used in immunization and even prescription, mainly prescription, when you are prescribing drugs, a doctor sometimes writes this TID, whereby TID stands for three times in a day. Three times in a day. Are we together? Three times in a day. Are we together? Yes, that's what it means in as far as uh, a drug prescription is concerned. Then also asked for TIR as used in what? So this one, TIR, can be, uh, in, in as far as transport is concerned, this is more of SST. It is international road transport. International road transport hope you have had all the answers whoever asked i think you've got the real answers i still remind you to sanitize because in that break we have touched different surfaces so we need to sanitize so that we remain free from the virus which causes this pandemic covid19 uh, last time children we looked at the law of livers and we applied the law of levers to calculate different moments, different forces, different arms. Uh, to remind you children, let me draw our, our lever. And I want the children who have been following carefully to name different parts of the lever. Great, that is the diagram. So I want to see some people answering various questions. The first question is, what is the name of part marked Y? Cuthbert, the pivot, correct. The pivot, part Y is the pivot. Who can tell us another name for the pivot? Fulcrum, I like that. Aha, uh -huh. then we said this part, of course, is the load force. What name did we give to the distance between the load and the pivot? Everybody, load arm or load distance. And this one is the effort. Everyone knows. What name did we give to the distance between the effort and the pivot? Everybody, effort arm. Correct. Effort arm. Then we again said that a moment is the product of the force and the distance from the pivot. Who can identify one moment from this diagram? Yes, Bridget, load times load arm, correct. Load, this load force times the load arm is a moment because a moment is the product of the force, which is the load force and the distance from the pivot. Who can identify another moment from the same diagram yes okay effort times effort arm so this is moment one then we have moment two this one also uh, rather effort times effort arm is also a moment effort times 
effort arm. Yes, what did we conclude? What can you conclude about these two forces, two moments, if the liver is balancing? Right, the moment on the right hand side is equal to the moment on the left hand side if this liver, if this machine is to balance. So we said that load force times load arm is equal to the effort force times effort arm. Yes. I am glad you still remember. So I told you we can use this law of levers to do what? To calculate any, any unknown. For example, I'm, giving, I'm reminding you, this is to remind some people who were not with us or people who have not, who have not mastered this one very well. Now, assume, assume this side we have 2 kilogram force, 2 kgf. And then the arm we have Y. And then this side we have 8 kgf. And then the distance here we have 8 meters. Now the question is find Y. Find Y. People who failed last time, this time you should not fail. Remember this part is the, everybody, the pivot, the turning point, the fulcrum. So, using the law of levers, it is very easy to find the value of Y. Any girl to put up the arm and remind me on what to do. Yes, Hannah. Uh-huh. Yes. Wonderful. Load force times load arm is equal to effort force multiplied by the effort arm. Once you state that in an examination, that is a mark. This number is always in section B and it carries four marks. The first mark, knowing the principle, knowing the law. Load force times load arm is equal to effort force times effort arm. You get a mark. Don't miss this mark. Stay to the law. Aha. Uh -huh. Can we substitute? Now I want someone to... Benjamin, can you help us substitute? Uh -huh. Load force, what do we put? Two, correct. I told you, you can ignore the units as, uh, when you are calculating. Times y, good, equals, Benjamin, go ahead. Okay, that is 8 times 8. I know all of you are good at multiplying. What is 2 times y? 2y, good, 2y equals, what is 8 times 8? Hey. Look at this uh, Albert saying 16. 8 times 8. Are you adding? What is 8 times 8? Yes, Piaget. 64. Correct. 64. 64. Mathematically, now when you reach a word, you do. Divide both sides by the coefficient of y, which is to so repeat the equation and say 2y equals 64. Then you say by two, by two. Here once, here once, here once, here what? This is three, this is two. So y equals 32. 32 what? Go back to the diagram. What does y represent? Does it represent the force or the distance? The distance. What are the units for the distance? Eight meters. Therefore, 32 will also be meters. Your teacher of mathematics has already told you to underline your answer. So do not forget to underline the answer. So this is your answer. So if I'm here, to, if I'm to mark, I come here, give a mark. That is one. I give a mark. I give a mark. And I give a mark. Those are four marks. Don't miss the four marks in section B. This is an examinable area. So you need to look at it with with care, with a lot of care. Now, this is what we did last time. But this time we are doing something different. It is related, we are using the law of levers, but in this case, we are going to use more than one force on one side of the pivot. I told you, if this is your lever, you can have two people on one side of the pivot. You can have a piece, you can have prince, then this side you can have someone who is very heavy, Elvis. So these two people 
And this one person here, this one it means is very heavy. So we we'll sit, uh, these two people will sit this side in order for these people to balance. And I'm giving you at least one example. We are going to look at it carefully, step by step, and then we see how to go about it. So I'm giving you this one here. This is the turning point. What is the name of the turning point, everybody? Yes, I've had the answer, pivot or fulcrum. Yes. So I have someone sitting here who weighs 40 kilograms. Yes. Then this person sits 9 meters away from the pivot. Then we have another person this side who weighs 40 kilograms still. 40 kilograms and sits 2 meters away from the pivot. Then there is another person whose weight is not known, whose mass is not known. And here it is X. Then, and this person sits three meters from this first person. Now the question is, find the value of X. Remember, I told you that for the liver to balance, the sum of clockwise moments must be equal to the sum of anticlockwise moments. Now, it means the moment this side from the pivot must be equal to the sum because this side we have very many moments. So when you add this moment plus this moment and you add them together, they should give you the moment on this side. Are we together? Now, what do you think this one is? The load. Correct? Uh-huh. What about this part here? Every head boy in the school say that. In, in any school, if you are the head boy, say the answer. Good. The, the, so this one will be load arm. What about this one? What is this? This is effort. But now you can see we have two efforts, so you can call this one effort one. What about this one? It is also effort. But because we have two efforts, let's differentiate them and say effort two. Good. What about this one? What do you think this one is? The distance between the effort and the pivot. Effort arm. So we can also call it effort, effort arm one. What about this one? Effort arm two. What is effort arm two? Three. Three? No. Another person? Another person is saying two. No, I'm saying no. Another person? Three. Someone is insisting it is three, three, but the teacher is saying no. What do you think is the reason? What is this three? This three is not the effort arm for this force. Why? I told you that effort arm is the distance between the pivot and the effort. Now, is this three between the pivot and the effort? No. Now, to get the effort arm for this, we have to count, to calculate the whole distance from here up to the pivot. I want you to observe carefully. I know people here will get problems. To get the effort arm for this, for this force, it will be the distance from this effort up to the pivot, not three. This three is not the effort arm for the other force. Now, what will you do? What you, what you do if you are a good mathematician? Come here, draw another line. That line is the one which will give you this distance from here to here. Now, who can tell me the total distance from the pivot to this effort two? Someone is telling me six. No. So it means this person said two times three. That is not right. Baker, what do you have to say? Good. You will get the distance from here to here, which is two, plus the distance from here to here, which is three. So it will be 2 meters plus 3 meters. So the total distance will be 5 meters. So if we are to multiply this force, we shall multiply it by 5, not 3. Reason, 3 is not the effort arm. Why? It is not starting from the pivot. We, want, we have to calculate the total distance from the pivot to the effort. Is every person following? So we can write and say now, we are stating our law of levers again and say load times load arm. Someone can say load force times load arm or another person can say load times load arm. It is the same thing. Equals effort 
arm effort one times effort arm one. Because we have very many moments on the other side, so we want to get the total sum. Then plus, we can put this one in brackets, plus effort two times effort arm two. Hope you are all following. Load force times load arm equals effort force one times effort arm one. Plus, because there are other moments on the other side, effort two, effort two times effort arm two. This is now effort arm two, this one here. Effort arm two. So we can substitute and say, uh-huh, uh-huh. Every head girl now, the other time, I gave a chance to head boys, head prefects. Now, head girls, where are you? Yes. Aha, uh -huh, that's good. Ahumza, I can hear Ahumza talking. That is good. So it is 40 times. Head girls, please. Be stronger than head boys. Right. Times 9. Aha. Uh -huh, equals effort arm 1, which is 40. Times effort arm 1, which is 2. Plus. Aha. Uh -huh, head girl, I can hear someone saying 3. No. Plus. X because we don't know effort 2. Then times effort arm 2, which is 5. 5, not 3. Because we want the distance from the effort to the pivot. So we can now work out this. What is 40 times 9? I told you with zero concept. First hide the zero. Get 9 times 6. Rather 9 times 4, which is what? 36. Then you lift the, the, the zero and put it. Which is equal to 80. Plus everybody, 5x. Good. Solve mathematically. Collect like terms and say, 360 minus 80 equals 80. Take away 80 plus 5x. Good. We are trying to remove this 80 from the other side and we want to remain with x as a subject. So we are removing all numbers which are making uh, 5 not to be a subject of the formula. So what is 36 minus 8? You can have part of working here. Part of working. 360 minus 80. Subtract 0. 6 minus 8, I don't know. What do you do? Yes, Moses. That's good. Regroup because 8 minus what? Minus 8 is not very easy. First regroup. Remain with 2 here. Carry 1. It becomes 16 minus 8. 8, 2 minus nothing, 2. So yeah, we shall remain with 280 equals 5x. Are we together? What next? What next? Samuel, what next? Oh, good. Divide each side by the coefficient of, five, of, of x, which is 5. So you say 280 equals 5x divided by 5. Divided by 5. Uh-huh. By 5, 1, by 5 in 28, how many times? 5 times, good. That is now, that one becomes 25. When you get 28 minus 25, you get 3. Then you bring 3, you put it here, and, uh, together with 0, it becomes 30. 30 by 5 is 6. Therefore, 56 equals x. Then you come here and conclude and say, therefore, x equals 56. Go back to the diagram and get the units. What does X stand for? Is it mass, the force, or the distance? It is the mass. What, is the, what, what unit has been used? Kilograms. So you can write and say it is equal to 56 kilogram. You can, I told you it's very, very good to add F. Kilogram force. Show that it is the effort. How many people are enjoying? Now, children, after looking at this, Look at it critically. I do not get tired of sanitizing my hands and always do the same. If you cannot get sanitizer, get clean water and soap and wash your hands thoroughly. Uh, I remind you children that whatever we are doing here, whatever lesson you watch, if you want to ask any question, if you want to send your answers, use the number on the screen to send a WhatsApp message. Please do not call or is follow instructions. Now, before we went for a break, we looked at application of the law of levers. This is still application. Application 
of the law of levers. Or you can say the principle of moments. So, we have I have given you an example. This is the example one. Example one. Now I'm giving you another example. Maybe before we go to the second example, let's remind ourselves we said the sum of clockwise moments are equal to, uh, rather is the same as the sum of anti-clockwise moments. The sum of the right hand side this way is the same as the sum of the left hand side. Load times load arm equals effort times effort arm plus effort times effort arm arm up to the pivot don't make a mistake and say times three because this three is not from the pivot example number two example two example two as i write this I've, as i write this on the board i want each and every person to be trying when i start asking i want to see all the hands up good make sure you are swift in whatever you are doing don't be very slow. We don't like slow children. Have you seen my diagram? What name is given to this part? This is the pivot or the full crumb. So I have my, my people here. I have Y. That Y. I have three meters here. This one can be a person sitting out from the sea, so maybe Kakama. Uh huh. Then I have another person here who, who is 15 newtons heavy, and this one I can call this one Kato. Then I have, and that one sits five meters from the pivot on a sea, so. Then we also have. We have this person here, we can call this one Mwine, the father of all this. He sits the other side and wants to balance all of them. And he sits six meters away. So we want to know how heavy, and this one weighs by the, 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 this, the, the, the what is 55 newtons. So the question is, find why. I don't know whether there are some people who have ever carried out such experiment at home. You get a seesaw at home, let your dad sit the other side, and there are two children sit on the opposite side and you try to play with the dad. And you find the ba balanced two people here, dad the other side, and you find the, the seesaw balancing. All right. Now, what do we do? We apply the law of levers. Yes. Who can state the law? Who can state the law of levers? Yes, Samson, load force, yes, times load arm, wonderful, equals effort force times effort arm. But remember, children, we have different moments on one side. On the left-hand side, we have two moments, this moment, this moment. Then on the right-hand side, we have one moment. Remember, a moment is the force times the distance from the pivot. So here we shall say load force, which you can say load one because we have two loads now. Load one, load two. Yes. So here we shall say times effort arm one. Rather load arm, sorry. Load arm because the distance between the load and the pivot is the load arm. Plus, because we have two moments now on this side, plus load force two times load arm two equals good enough the other side we have only one moment equals effort times effort arm full stop can we substitute now can we substitute together y correct uh-huh all boys times three wrong boys you are failing times what times what times three is three the distance of this load from the pivot? We multiply the distance from the pivot. Don't just look at the number and multiply. That distance should be from the pivot. So we want to know how far is Kakama from the pivot? That will be the load arm. So what is it? 
it is this 3 plus this 5, so the arm is 8 meters. Have you seen that? We are not multiplying by 3 because 3 is not from the pivot. The arm should be from the pivot to the load. So that's why I'm going now to say times 8 plus uh -huh, 50 times 5. We are free to multiply 5 because 5 is the distance from the pivot to Kato. Equals what? 55. Good. Times everybody, six. Wonderful. Now we can solve mathematically. What is eight times y? Eight y, good. Don't write y eight, no. When we are dealing with unknowns, the number is written first, which we call the coefficient, then the unknown comes last. So, plus, what is 50 times five? Zero concept, first hide zero, get five times five, and you get 25. Then you bring the zero at the end. Equals 55 times, times 6. I can have my part of working here. Part of working. Multiply properly. Uh huh. What is 6 times 5? Someone is talking of 11. No, land tables. Someone is talking of 35. No. Can we recite table 5? 5, 10, 15, 20. 25, 30. 6 times, it is 30. So we write 0 and we carry 3. Uh -huh. What is 6 times 5? Still 30. What do you write? No, you have to carry after getting 30. Remember, we have carried this one here. So what will you come up with? 33. 33, so it will be 33. Meaning, 300, rather 55 times 6 is 330. Are we together? So we can now solve and say 8y uh -huh, plus 250. Yes, someone is telling me plus 250. No, you have to put the additive inverse, the opposite, which will make this number zero. So we shall say minus 250. Equals what? 330 take away 250. You can subtract vertically. This is what? Zero. Good. Three minus five. Not easy. Regroup. Here I remain with two. Here it becomes 13. 13 minus five, eight. Good. So here we shall say eight y equals 80. Repeat the equation and, and divide each side by eight. So we say eight y out of 8 equals 80 out of 8. Are you enjoying the speed? Good. Scientists, mathematicians always have, always have some speed, so don't, don't worry. And also try to increase on your speed whenever you are doing such work. Here one, here one. Uh -huh. Here one, here one with a zero. So y equals 10. Go back and now check the units. What does y represent? The load. What are the units on the other side? Newtons, Newtons. So this one will also be Newtons. Double underline and enjoy each and everything. Are we together, young ones? Good, good, good. Be digesting that. I'm going now to rub off this. I'm going to give you two related numbers. Two related numbers. I want each and every person to try and answer them very well. Remember, the law of levers states that the load force multiplied by the load arm is equal to the effort force multiplied by the effort arm. Or we can say the principle of moment states that the sum of clockwise moments is equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moments. So with that law, with that principle, you can't go wrong. Find the unknowns using the law of levers.
So A A is here. So here, this is the pivot. Remember, here I have 15 kilograms force. This is the pivot. Don't forget, this one is 4 meters away from the pivot. We have another force here, 5 kgf, which is 2 meters away from the pivot. Then we have the second force, this side, which is 10 kilogram force. And then this one is x, x meters from the pivot. I want you now to find the unknown. The unknown is now x. So in this case, find x. Number two. This is the pivot, our turning point. We have two forces this side and also two forces this side. So here we have the forces in grams this time, 30 grams. Okay, let's maintain 30 kgf. And then this one is three meters. Then we have another force here which is 40 kgf and this one is two meters from the pivot then we have another force 25 kgf and this force is two meters from the pivot then we have the, another force this side which is x now we don't know this x i want you to find it and this one is Four meters. These are the only numbers I'm giving you. Why? Each number is taking four marks. So if you pass the two numbers, you'll be having eight. Remember, we are applying the law of levers, the principle of moments, whereby when you get the moment this side, and remember to get the moment, you get the force times the distance. We have one force, 15 times the distance is here. It is equal to the moment the other side, this force times the distance from the pivot. This force times the distance from the pivot. Once you do that, you will not find any problem. The same here. Here we have two forces on either side. 30 times the distance from the pivot. 40 times the distance from the pivot. So here you add this plus this equals this plus this. I know once you do that, you will not find any challenges. Children, I know you have enjoyed. Children, make sure you are very keen when you are multiplying, when you are dividing. Remember, after doing all this work, send your answers on our WhatsApp number, which is on the screen. I know some of you missed some work when we are starting this program. We are sending you a link. After getting that link, go to YouTube, download whatever you want, and we are ready to keep on giving you whatever you want. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you much for listening. God bless you. All this is from Kampala Parent School, NTV Uganda, and Mbiahuzia Bernard in particular. Thank you so much. To participate, send a short WhatsApp video of yourself asking the teacher a question about the topic to 0705 031 609.